Hi, welcome to Antique Quest. Today we're doing our Harrison Sons auction walkthrough for our summer spectacular auction. And we're just going to walk around fairly quickly, try and describe things to you, give you an idea of size. And then toward the end of the video, I'm going to move the camera over there and put my hands on to some of the smaller items just to give you an idea again of size and detail, uh, that sort of thing. So we're going to go ahead with that. Um, we got a couple beautiful things right here. An absolutely beautifully carved decoy here. And it's got some wonderful old paint, glass eyes. Um, that's the cutout at the bottom, but in a swimming pose. And I don't know who made that. It's unfortunate because it's a fantastic decoy. That's in our sale. This wonderful box here um, with a lift out tray. And go online, have a look at this box because it's got some interesting uh, inscriptions in there about um, certain people dying and, and commencing fire on such and such a date. But it also comes with this great early letter where this Mr. Thompson was applying for a salmon license in New Brunswick. Um, but this has everything you want to see if you're a Canadiana collector. Absolutely right as rain, original, wonderful surface on this, original paint. So great piece there. Let's go see some more. Beautiful large painting there. Uh, it's an oil on canvas. And this is a Ted Goodwin who is uh, much more popular on the West Coast than, than we know about him on the East Coast, but that's an interesting numbered and signed print by him. And this one's quite large, if you can give me an idea. My hand there. Uh, let's see, we've got some more over here. Got quite a large one there on the ground. Unsigned, uh, beautifully done. Um, has an Ontario look, great big frame on it. But again, it's an oil on canvas and it is backed. We have this again, McInnes, uh, much more followed on the West Coast. Um, oil painting there. We have a wonderful John Cook um, pencil drawing signed down here, 1967. East Berlin, Nova Scotia. And we have another interesting early work of Halifax. It is pencil signed. I'm not 100% sure if we're dealing with a, um, a pencil drawing or a print of some sort. We have this very interesting Japanese um, silk screen. And I'm told that these represent samurais down here. I'm not sure about the rest of it, what it represents, but really well pencil signed and, and numbered 34 out of 75. Some more paintings over here, 1965 oil painting. Can't quite make out the name. Um, and this is a really early oil on canvas, however, it's been put under glass at one time and an old mat on there. Really early old oil on canvas. And there's a nice piece here by E. Foster, which would be watercolor and um, gouache, uh, sort of a mixed media work there. And here is the Africville checkerboard. This is all leather. These are all pieces of leather in here. Uh, it's got beautiful old color to it, um, interesting slots, but I almost like the back as much as the front. Look at this wonderful old leather to keep it from scratching the wall. And by the shadow and by this pattern of nails here, we believe there might have been sort of a paper, maybe a paper game of some sort on the back of it. But just a really neat old piece. Uh, and the history is just sort of passed down from to the buyers that it came from Africville. There's no other provenance other than just passed on provenance. But a really great piece there. Okay. Now we've got some nice early cups. Um, very early English pieces. Great little transferware. Unusual uh, London marked pewter spoon. 
this great African basket uh, with the black decoration but this is really firm that's just fantastic uh, its construction we've got some great butter presses here and with a great look at this early image of the beaver love that one and we've got another beaver one here and we've got a couple nice little pantry boxes and this one has been uh, folk painted at one point but uh, really early little pantry box there uh, gorgeous flame birch I would say uh, cutlery box here and we've got a collection of crooked knives here nice chip carving on that one nice inlaid lead or pewter decoration nice little tea caddy missing one of its lids but still another nice early cutlery box a copper printing plate from Jopling showing uh, natives building dugout canoes uh, wonderful early bellows all folk carved well used great color on it uh, fabulous lollipop handle on there nice little crib board no slot for it so it's just made up and nice ox blood paint on there <laughs> incredible little mortar and pestle uh, and I would say this one is carved rather than turned. Uh, just fantastic age and color on there. I don't know if this is going to focus. It usually doesn't. Well, I'm trying to do it by hand here. Nice little mouse hole in this pantry box with a wonderful paint surface on it. Green paint. It is split, however. So you would have to uh, tend to that. Uh, it looks like it's got a signature in there, but we don't know about that. Great wall box here. Canted front, dovetailed. Uh, sides are not canted. But look at the... Oh, I don't know if we can get, get just some lighting that will show this nicely. But, uh, you know, it's had a little make-do repair to keep it hanging on the wall here with a nail in sideways. But just fabulous color fabulous color and form uh, put it down here and show you the back too much glare in here to make it really show the surface on that um, got some great Canadiana books in here ones that you should have if you're collecting Canadiana A magnificent little sticking Tommy and this one is really fine very fine work Great little chair, lots of character, great old blue paint on that one, lot number 60. And this early native bowl, round bottom, so what we've done is uh, there was a stand made for it, beautiful stand, cherry wood, uh, it just sits on those four posts, but that's a wonderful early native bowl. Uh, spent a lot of time underground, which is that white scaling mark on it. And it uh, was brought up from a Florida collection back in the 50s. Okay, great little dome top box here. Uh, all this gilt is just painted on. Neat little document box. Fabulous, folky shell picture frames with tin types of him and her uh, that is missing one little shell right there a uh, great game board here fp webster november 4th 1884 can't quite get it up with one hand again decent surface on this one um, wonderful old board had a little extension on there square nail sticking through there Really nice old uh, game board there. Nice to see them dated. This uh, really nice American painting here, a little watercolor. Signed C.W. Field, 1878. And it's sort of a nice burled, veneered frame. Again, more good Canadiana books. 
This is an interesting piece, said to have been purchased in Germany. Uh, all made out of antique stoneware vessels, and it's supposed to be called the Broken Vessel. Uh, unfortunately, the old guy that bought it couldn't remember the name of the artist. He did remember what it was called. And these are signed Karl Albach, Austrian bookends. So great for the mid-century collectors, and they just go together like so and hold bookends, but a very valuable. Do some research on him and on these exact bookends. They sell in the $1,000, $1,500 range. Um, this is an interesting oh, big pottery piece as well, and this one does have hangers built into it. It's quite thick, but it's sort of a, a Taurus-looking bowl here. Hard to make out because of the splotchy finish, but the real Picasso look to it. Henry George Glide block print here. Uh, again, sorry for the glare, folks. That's what glass does for you. But a signed piece. Yeah, it's not focusing now either. A uh, little libation cup, horn. The silver rim is loose, but easily glued back on. Interesting vase. Can't make out that signature, but a really neat glaze on there. A little mice and teapot, no lid, some early, early pottery, a couple of Asian vessels back there. Um, these, I'm not sure where they're from, but uh, interesting clay on there anyway. A little Stetson advertising salesman sample hat, and a vase here that we believe could be Lotz or definitely Austrian, Czechoslovakian of that sort. And what do we got over here? Lots more books. A flu cover, some lamp covers or lamp holders. A uh, nice little watercolor here. And here's a great game board. This early, early game board. Great folk decoration again on that one. And uh, it does have an HE carved into the back of it. And just somebody's put a rope on there for hanging. And L.H. Trethaway was apparently, a, it's double sided, a blacksmith sign from here in Nova Scotia. And then we've got some unusual baskets, some more books, interesting mid century print. And more books, some great knife boxes here. Beautiful knife boxes. Newer interiors in them. Um, nice family rose charger, which comes with quite a few other things in that lot. A little Chinese inkwell. Nice Chinese pot was bought in China by the consigner about 25 years ago. And this alabaster Buddha. Very interesting uh, made box here. Not native, but really well made. Japanese block print. And we have a wonderful Dennis Tickle oil on masonite. A few Bartlett's of Annapolis Valley in Annapolis Royal area. A fabulous etching by Briscoe. Very well known. Do some research on him as well. Some mid-century sort of erotic fantasy type paintings. Interesting stuff. Uh, some great modern works. This is a nice pair. And it's signed TD92. Uh, really neat. A lot going on in there. And this is a Peter Farmer original drawing. Again, uh, English artist, but came over here, very well known. A American artist, uh, etching. Nice view of a restaurant from up above. Some more paintings, Bill Smith painting. Uh, fabulous Northwest Coast. I'm not gonna pronounce his name, but he is a known artist and it's on there. It's a wonderful screen print. And then, Sort of a Norvell Morriso, looks like it was copied by somebody on thin paper. And a uh, nice schoolhouse clock. 
and various things down here. A really rare Aladdin lamp here. Um, oh, there's the rest of the contents for the other one. And just some fun things down there, some carpets and whatnot. And an amazing collection here of copper, early copper. Some great big pieces, lots of uh, pots and pans and, and uh, some wonderful brass pieces here as well. Uh, chamber sticks and these fabulous set of weights. That's a two pound weight right there. And two large four pound weights, but just beautiful early stuff. And look at these great big jelly pans. Nice set of uh, trivets as well. Okay, and over here we've got lots of bells. Great noises. And then sleigh bells, of course, everybody likes. But these, these are old doorbells, like a shopkeeper's doorbells, but listen to the sound. I mean, the door would swing and then they would, they would get hit. Oh man, it's just a gorgeous sound. Nice carved grizzly bear. I'm not sure what the wood is, it's hardwood. Um, some burl bowl, some native moose hair and beadwork, and a uh, fabulous folk carved eagle flying over a river. And this one is signed, but that's all carved wood. When I first saw it, I thought it was clay. Winter, Joe Winter, May 30th, 95. A lot of carving, look at the wings, just fantastic. Uh, nice little basket, some more artwork here. Some paintings, nice little Ontario scene there. Uh, coverlet, beautiful coverlet. But um, let me see if I can get around here, show you this magnificent hooked runner. Look at that, and in fantastic condition too. Beautiful Nova Scotia hooked runner. Just in great shape. Nice geometric one down there. And we're gonna go around here, and we're gonna show you the other runner we have. A Persian style runner. And I believe it is signed in there. So another great piece there. Oh, and I don't want to forget this. Very rare Kentville Crock, two gallon W.E. Porter, grocer and glassware and company, Kentville, Nova Scotia. Okay, let's have a look at some of the native items we have. And hopefully with my hands in there, it'll give you the idea of size. Um, beautiful little Iroquois purse, little handbag. Yeah, it's got this on both sides. Beautiful beadwork, really colorful. Great color to it. Uh, the sides need some stitching. Uh, great piece there. These are interesting. These little Mi'kmaq made. Um, wrapped old medicine bottles because that's a really thick lip bottle you know sort of 1900 1910 period but this is all sweet grass and splint but uh, really neat I haven't seen any of these before uh, there's a couple little flaws in this one but all in all really good shape and this one has all its little flares there now these are the baskets that everybody's quite interested in. The quill boxes, rather, not baskets. Um, just again, to give you an idea of size, these all came out of one collection. A uh, little bit of quill damage there, but that can be repaired. But some fabulous design work on these. And just for size comparisons. Nice little piece here. Look at all this lattice work here. And this one is in really good order. You know, very hard to find these anymore, let alone in this kind of condition. Uh, it's another little neat one. Again, a little damage here. One of the quills is sticking up there. Not a big deal. 
There's something on the bottom of that, but we can't make anything out. A little red color there. A little bit missing down here. But, um, yeah, just a beautiful little quill boxes. And then these are the real cat's meow. Beautiful star pattern here. There's just a little piece missing there. But look at the great color, all dyed quills. Uh, it looks to be in pretty good shape around here too. A little bit there. Again, beautiful little boxes that work in there. And then the last one. Again, this is fantastic. I love this. Look at these little design work here. Again, dyed quills. Nice early color on some of this too. A little break there. Some quills lifting up here. A little piece of tape on there, so I'm assuming that's just holding down some quills and we'll leave that for the buyer. being that close. I can't do both and watch at the same time, so we'll get some more. Okay, I'm really excited to show you these. Uh, one is this wonderful early portrait of a gentleman on canvas. Um, frames long gone. Good dark color, but just a, a great face. You know, just that classic folk look for uh, portraits. I mean, it's just uh, a really great decoration piece as well. We don't know who the sitter is, unfortunately. But this is what I'm really excited to show you. This is magnificent. Best powder horn we've had. Um, most likely New our Newfoundland. <clears throat> but it's James Hunt. Uh, and that's they did eyes for J's back then and there's a little T up here so he ran out of room or the horn was cut down later well no because this would have been at the time of carving so maybe he thought he was gonna have more room and he had to cut it a little bit to make this work anyway uh, hunt little tiny T I love that that's a great piece of character there let's flip it over this way so we've got this wonderful creature. I'm not 100% sure what that's supposed to be. I don't know if you can, I'm hoping you can see this. And then we have this man with the fishing rod holding a fish in his hand. He's got a top hat on. And he's got a basket full of fish here. And it shows his line going into the water and all the fish in the water. Uh, we've got a spotted goose here. Uh, another one there. And a wonderful fish up here. I'm not sure what that's what type of fish that's representing. And then as we go down here, we get some pretty fanciful creatures. So we have a... This one seems to have a spike on the front, but I'm not sure if that's part of it or not. Uh, but this is great. This is... I don't know if it's supposed to be a horse, but it has a spike on the end of its tail. It's got some pretty ferocious looking teeth there. And then this looks like a sea serpent of some sort. I mean, it's uh, just really fanciful. Now, there is some initials carved here, but they're so um, dark now with age that we can't quite make it out. But uh, you can certainly do some more research there if you like. And this is where it gets interesting over here, too. So we have a... A guy that looks like he's carrying a bottle of booze and he's got his pack on his back like he's running away from home. Um, there's a anchor here and a topless native here and a mermaid here with her tail holding an arrow. And then I'm not sure what this design represents. But this is what I love to see right here. This is where it would have swung and rubbed on something its whole life and it's erased the feet the bottom of the anchor the bottom of the feet and part of the mermaid this is all a telltale sign of genuine age the carving was done a long time ago uh, long enough that this is worn right through in use um, 
Nice little wooden end on there. Just a fantastic, fantastic powder horn. This is folk art at its best. I absolutely love this piece. We're very excited to get it and very excited to offer it. Um, it's museum quality. It's just, uh, it's magnificent. Let's see some more. So we're here, we have another variety of some of the smalls that are in the sale. Um, we just want to, again, give you some of the highlights. We're not going to show you everything in the auction, but this is just some of the things we think you might have found interesting. Uh, this is a great little bulldog. And this is made by Lisa Larson, who is a designer in Sweden. We had a, a fox of hers earlier in the year. Sells very well, mid-century work. Uh, great little brass and what looks like rosewood snuff box. Interesting piece. And this is a 18 karat gold, 1847 was this was given as a gift. Now it would have had a pair of um, scissors in here and maybe some other small tools, needles and a thimble. Um, so it would have been a whole little sewing kit. Unfortunately, the only thing left now is the gold thimble. But interesting, inscribed on there, early piece. And this cutter is Middle Eastern, I'm gonna say, and very early. And this is all copper. Um, now we have it as a tobacco cutter or a uh, sugar nip, but there's it could possibly be for what's called beetle nuts, for cracking beetle nuts. Um, but the, it's interesting to see that there is a, a worn pattern in behind here that's um, really just showing age. I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I tip it, but it's a uh, very interesting horse shaped uh, cutter. Um, this is quite an interesting Chinese piece. Uh, we're assuming it's silver. It's not marked. It's got the dragon here um, Chasing the flaming pearl But it looks like it was something else at first now. It's hanging on a chain, but I'm not sure what these bars were for if it was some sort of buckle or catch But uh, really nice work nice detail on the scales on the dragon um, This is a Carved jadeite, jade, um, not 100% sure, uh, other than being decorative, what this might be for, but it's three carp, kind of joined, and it's carved on both sides. Can't really tell you a whole lot about it, it's just an interesting work of art, really. Um, you got this amazing figured, I think it's walnut, book box, so shaped like a book. It has had chips, you can see off the corners, some very long time ago and some a while back. Um, but if I can figure out how to do this again. It's a little tricky, there we go. To get into, just slides off. Old felt interior, but just a nifty little thing. Beautiful painted porcelain plaque really well done really well painted um, no signature that we can see I'm not sure if we did find something on the back let's take another look all the things coming in I forget lots of what I see when I first look at things yeah. Marillo Mad Marillo so anyway some stuff there for further research um, but a beautiful little painting really nice quality in this sale um, you know some of the consigners just just really purchased great items really interesting Isnik uh, Middle Eastern jug super old um, all crazed and cracked through the glaze here but uh, really wonky shape all handmade you know so an interesting piece there. We don't see a lot of that. And I'm going to show you some of these little Steef Bears. And I'm sorry if we didn't show everybody everything you wanted to see in this sale, but please go online and have a look. 
And this is the one I wanted to show you mostly. These are Steve with their button and tags. Um, this little one, we're not sure. He's articulated as well. Really well made. But these are usually Shoko made these bears. And they were perfume bears. So you'd have your perfume in this vial and you'd have a cork stopper. And he'd sit on your uh, dresser. And little perfume bear bottles. They're, they're hard to find, but... Uh, like I say, they're usually Shuko German-made 20s or so. So that's a whole lot there. And finally, I'd like to show you this um, Kralik art glass vase. Now this is a massive piece, but I want you to be able to see the iridescence to it. And it's got all this uh, trailing on it. Um, they were contemporary of Lotz. So you have Rinskopf, Kralik, Palm Koenig, Lotz, uh, all major Austrian glass companies, Czechoslovakian as well. Um, but this is an absolute massive piece and it's a really dark amethyst with this gorgeous iridescent. And I think we finally settled on Kralik because we found this shape. So this is a shape that they're known to have used, but it's huge and it's in absolutely gorgeous condition. Ground off Pontel. Um, but a fabulous piece of uh, 1920s art glass. Beautiful little American carriage clock. Small one, wonderfully made. Gifford and Company, Fall River, Massachusetts. Excellent condition. And uh, running as you can see there. Nice little swing handle and a key in the back there. But uh, just a gorgeous little carriage clock. And of course, the usual odds and ends sort of things that we get. Uh, you know, bartender, I believe the, uh, his ears smoke and everything when you get the batteries working. Some tin toys, a nice surprise soap box. Uh, all sorts of things. We don't want to forget these two totem decorations. Nova Scotia folk art at its best and these are huge they're about eight feet tall uh, some really neat design work here and go online to read all about the character that made these very interesting pieces and they were decorating his uh, shop rehabilitation center for animals uh, you name it That's it for today, folks. I hope that helps you out a little bit. And as usual, if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. Uh, you can give us a call. Our number's on our website, harrisonsonsauctions.com. And you can email us or um, any requests you might have. And as always, um, safe pickup is available and we do ship worldwide, really. Uh, unless things are listed as pickup only, things like these eight foot tall totems, that sort of thing. So thanks for watching. God bless. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.